Australia Kiwi New Car Safety Ratings Agency, ANCAP, has just Joan rivers the crap out of its website. <laughs> so that's really trouser teepees all round, isn't it? Even more hilariously, though, they've just become, unwittingly perhaps, the architects of the next great safety-related new car buying disaster. And we really need to talk about that. I'm John Cadogan from AutoExpert.com. Oh, and I get new cars cheap. Four star, five star, zero star. I don't care. So that's on you. Australia only website card. Now, got this delightful press release the other day from my very good friends at ANCAP. Refreshed ANCAP website provides consumers with additional ways to check the safety of their car. <laughs> it's just the same way. You just go to the website. It's just a sexed up website slightly. So there's that. The revised site, they say, all the dubs, ancap.com.au in Australia and all the dubs, ancap.co.nz in Adernistan, offers new tools to enhance search functionality. Yes. Enabling visitors to quickly and easily. It's both of those things, quickly and easily. View safety ratings for over 830 new and used vehicle models. Fantastic. So, I went to ancap.com.au and prepared the lubricant and got into, you know, that state of mind that you need in this situation. The first vehicle that hit me in the grill was the, guess, the Opel Mocha. <laughs> Small problem. It's not on sale here. So it's not actually two websites at all. It's not ancap.com.au and ancap.co.nz. It's the same friggin' website with a different alias, depending on where you are geographically. And you still see irrelevant shit in either one. So would it be that hard to distinguish between models on sale in New Zealand and models on sale here because surely there is geographic data associated with the IP address of most users, right? There just would be. So could we not filter it so that somebody doesn't get a real trouser TP over the Opel Mocha only to have his or her trouser TP hopes dashed by virtue of it not being fucking available? I'd really like that as a feature, you know? Now, the volleyball refereeing lawyer who's in charge of Anne Cappen, who has, uh, according to her LinkedIn, no automotive experience whatsoever except for the past slightly less than two years at ANCAP. She said this, and I love this. This is... Oh, dude. Make it a big one. Whether you're an older driver looking to purchase a safe and small city runabout, a fleet manager needing to prioritise both safety and low emissions for your corporate fleet, a new parent wanting to provide your family with a safe ride large enough to accommodate the pram and the groceries, or a tradie needing to find a dual cab new for the latest safety features, then you search tools available. <sighs> Nearly made it in one breath. On the ANCAP website, we'll present a list of safer options to meet your specific needs. <sighs> Thanks, Carla. I'm spent. That was amazing. 87 word sentence? <laughs> yes! <laughs> the big question, did she breathe? Did she even say that out loud and ponder perhaps that it might have been a nice idea to split it up into, you know, digestible chunks with full stops and things of that nature? Probably not. Can any human being actually say that in one breath without losing consciousness? Who will be the first big wig wanker to crack 100 words without a full stop or a breath? Who will it be? That effort of Ms. Horwig's easily eclipses Steve Amor's groundbreaking 57-word sentence in the Electric Vehicle Council's recent release on their bullshit plan to hit 1 million EVs in Australia by 2027. 
He only had the record for this long, but it was a solid effort. Now, pro tip, all cars bigger than a Picanto can actually accommodate a pram in the groceries, so there's that. She went on and said this too, which I find quite interesting. The ANCAP website is far more than just a platform to search for safety ratings. It provides a wealth of information allowing users to better understand... <sighs> Split infinitive. The verb is to understand. You can't put an adverb in between. That's like... Eh. That's verboten. It really is. Except, of course, if you are... The shat. The shat can do that. To boldly go. Like, ladies and gentlemen, but he's in a class of his own. I mean, chicks want to, you know, and dudes want to, some dudes want what chicks want. I'm not going there. But I'm just saying, the shat. He can split the infinitive. For everyone else, just keep the fucking verb together. Ah. And I disagree on the fundamental point here to better understand vehicle safety features and learn what and how we test. I disagree. The ANCAP website is still just a catalogue of safety ratings and sort of vague self-justification designed mainly to look kind of virtuous and therefore help to secure the next all-important round of government funding. That's what they're really here for. Now, let's talk about this latest ANCAP deck chairs on the Titanic fiasco because this botch is really terrible. It's the botch of rescinding the star ratings after six years. Essentially, it's a use-by date on the star ratings, right? At six years of age, like year of test plus six years, they expire. And the first round of expiring is going to happen on the 1st of January next year, just a few months hence, okay? And the problem with that is you have to manage it when you change a system fundamentally. Like, dude, I am on board with Shitbox Amarok losing its friggin' safety rating from 2011. Like, two thumbs up. It's a great concept. Vehicles should not be able to hang on to their five-star rating indefinitely because it sends a flawed picture to the market about what five-star actually means. It was the best back then in 2011. Things have moved on. Current Amarok would be flat out getting two stars now kind of thing. I mean, that shitbox doesn't even have airbags in row two for the kids. And yet, someone might look at that five-star rating and go, oh, it's five-star. It might be sold to a person on that basis. And if you don't know any better, you think, yeah, I've got a great, safe car for the family. And relatively speaking, you don't. Okay, so there's that. But here's what's going to happen on the 1st of January, right? Among other vehicles, there's another 12 vehicles on top of the ones I'm about to discuss, which will lose their five-star ratings, and they will be unrated, as I understand it, from the 1st of January, 2023. These include Prado, Amarok, Triton, Navara, Pajero Sport, and another 12 cars that are less likely to be part of this problem, okay? Okay. And we've got to see this through the prism of the current automotive stock shortages, where somebody jumps on a queue in fucking May or something, and they're really looking forward to getting this car as promised by Christmas, hopefully, if what the dealer said was true, and they weren't just bullshitting them on delivery date to get them on their queue, right? So here's what happens. If you're a contractor who goes into other big businesses, and I'm thinking about primary and secondary sort of industry like construction, mining, rock crushing plants, these big fuck off industries, and you're an air conditioning mechanic or something of that nature, and you have to drive on site, and the parent company that owns the whole show has this uber focus on safety, okay, and only five star vehicles are allowed on site. So if your vehicle is slated for delivery in December 23, let's say, then that's okay for you because it'll be five star. Let's say you've got a Triton on order, but it could be a Prado, an Amarok, a Navara or a Pajero Sport, right? You might have ordered that 
way back in March, April, May, something of that nature. You might be sweating on it by Christmas so that you can start the new year and do your contracting thing in a new vehicle. Well, that's going to be fine if delivery happens on the 23rd of December or something. But if the dealer rings you up two days before fucking Christmas and goes, dude, got a problem, it's going to be two more weeks. And delivery does not take place until the first week of January. You're fucked. Because the vehicle you take delivery of is no longer five stars. And these businesses with these policies about five stars, got to be five stars. Never mind that it's the same fucking car. Like, it's the same car. It's got the same safety features. It protects you just the same, irrespective of the delivery date. From a purely bureaucratic and administrative point of view, the vehicle that you take delivery of will be unrated and therefore not compliant with that umbrella organisation's policy of having five-star vehicles on site. And this is like a major hurdle between you and earning your income, right? And all of these features and benefits and positions that ANCAP occupies as the independent voice of safety... I haven't heard anything from them, no advice to major industrial operators about the management of this process, especially in light of the prevailing market conditions, which mean that some bastard could have been waiting for his car, could have ordered it nine months ago, could be expecting it by Christmas, it could be days late, and therefore he can't bring it on site, do his job earn his fucking income. That is a disgrace. And this is what happens when these bureaucratic dickheads don't think about the practicalities of the process. Like, this is a major problem for you because if you're Mr. Small Business, you're a self-employed air conditioning mechanic or whatever, you run some friggin' radar that looks into the ground to find the services in some major industrial site so that they can dig up wherever without exploding the fucking gas main. Christ knows what. You might be that dude and that vehicle could be a major spend for you and getting out of it could be a real hit. And yet, there is no impact on the safety to you. This is just a bureaucratic fuck-up, basically. And it's you're going to be carrying the can for it, dude, if it affects you. If that vehicle is supplied just one or two days late. So, I think this is just another example of ANCAP not thinking about the process, the price, the feedback effect of these bullshit rearranging the deck chair on the Titanic rules and the way they keep changing the system, which is, to me, incomprehensible and deplorable. So I'd love to know what you think about that. And if you are that dude who is sweating on that car and it's got to be here before the 31st of December, otherwise you're fucked. I'd really like to hear from you in the comments and what you think about that, because as I see it, this is just a bunch of essentially taxpayer-funded dudes in a boardroom sitting around having a meeting about nice ideas and getting them across the line and patting themselves on the fucking back for doing a great job and at the same time not thinking hard enough about it and effectively throwing small business operators under the bus, which I find morally and ethically reprehensible. Okay, so the final point I'd make with you about this is in the bad old days... I used to be a real supporter of ANCAPs because they didn't actually have a proper five-star rating system. It was five stars, but there were really, it was binary. There was only five stars or death trap because four, three, two, one, or zero stars, death trap. That's how it was in the olden days, but that's not how it is now. Four stars is actually pretty good, and I think... Fleet operators need to acknowledge that and they need to change where the bar is for acceptability for their fleets. Because in the current system, I'd have no hesitation owning a four-star car because it would be safe enough. I'd have a look at it and see how it crashed. And if it didn't have one or two of these 
advanced safety features, the crash avoidance ones, where, let's face it, if you just pay attention, you don't need half of them. If it just had that, I'd go, you know what, that's good. I'm happy with that. And the other thing you need to realise, okay, is that ANCAP is really just cloning Euro ANCAP's everything. Euro ANCAP has this process and ANCAP clones it for our market. Not only do they clone the process, they just clone the results for vehicles that we get here that are also tested by Euro NCAP. There's some engineering interpretation done, obviously, in terms of the spec of those vehicles. But in terms of the fundamental crash evaluation, most of that, if the vehicle's available over there and tested by Euro NCAP, ANCAP doesn't test it. Okay, they just lunch off the results and lunch off the protocols, which are exactly the same. Okay, so how the fuck can four stars be a different thing in Australia than it is in the EU? That's my question for ANCAP. Okay, because here's what Euro ANCAP says about four stars. This is a quote from Euro ANCAP's website. Overall good performance in crash protection and all round. Additional crash avoidance technology may be present. So that means the car did pretty fucking well and it might have a bunch of those advanced safety crash avoidance type features. That's what I hear when I read that out loud. Okay, here's what Australia and Cap says. Okay, four star safety provides an adequate level of safety. Now, adequate means satisfactory or acceptable, okay? So I'm happy with that so far. Provides an adequate level of safety performance, yet fell short in one or more key assessment areas. May present a higher injury risk to occupants and or other road users in certain scenarios or have a reduced ability to avoid a crash. Same protocols, same results, different interpretation. So who's fucking it up? If I go and have, well, if I was an employee, I'd kill myself. Like, I'd never be able to do it again and no one would hire me anyway. But if I went for an annual performance review and somebody reviewed my performance and they said, overall, good, and you did your core stuff, in particular your core functions, overall good, and all round good, and occasionally you rise up a little bit and you've got, you know, potential there that you're exploiting above and beyond. Well done, dude. And if they assessed me to the same protocols and said, adequate, you were adequate, but you fell short in one or more key areas, and you may represent a higher risk to the business and or customers in certain scenarios or have a reduced ability to perform when you're asked to think outside the box. Like, (laughs) I'd be going, probably this job's not for me. And yet I'd be being rated according to exactly the same set of criteria. That is insane. It's an insane interpretation. How can you have an adequate level of anything and yet fall short? I don't get that. It sends the wrong message. How the fuck can you use the same protocols, exactly the same testing system and scoring system, and yet interpret it so differently? Like, as I understand it, ANCAP has been spending the past few weeks to months, slutting itself out all over town, basically telling everyone who will listen that four stars is not good enough. And I absolutely don't understand this when that is not what the system that was designed by Euro NCAP, implemented by Euro NCAP, and contextualised for the public by Euro NCAP. That's not what their system says. And what I would say to you, if you're a fleet manager or a contractor, is that in the domain of occupational health and safety, four stars is good enough. It's good. The progenitor of this rating system describes four stars as good overall good performance in crash protection 
and all round. The fact that that is not the case here in Australia is disgraceful. The Occupational Health and Safety Act, of course, does not say that all risk needs to be eliminated. It just basically says that risk needs to be effectively managed to the extent that's feasible, okay? And I'd suggest that four stars is an example of effectively managing the risk of being in a vehicle to the extent that is feasible in the context of business operations. Please tell me where I'm wrong. And let me know how you're going to feel if you miss out on getting one of those vehicles that's about to lose its five-star safety rating, and but for the grace of one week of administrative bullshit, your vehicle is no longer al allowed to be on site at your client's premises. And how the fuck are you going to get around that? I'd really like to know. Thanks for watching.